Okay, going back to our flow chart so we can see our strategy, notice that in the first step we added HCl to precipitate silver chloride, and we've collected that in a pellet. And now we have a supernatant that contains copper two and iron three ions, and our next step is to precipitate them as sulfides. Now think about the strategy. Why didn't we use the sulfide first? Well, because if we had used sulfide first, the silver ions would have also precipitated as silver sulfide, and that wouldn't have helped us. So the key of this strategy here then is to select chemical reagents that will sequentially precipitate one cation at a time. In this case, we're going to precipitate these ions by using something called thioacetamide, and later in the semester, those of you in Chem 1B will understand how that works. Notice that in order for this separation to work, we had to make sure the solution is acid. 0.5 pH means that it's acidic. And that way, we will selectively precipitate the copper 2 sulfide while leaving the iron 3 ions in solution for further analysis. Okay, students, this is the supernatant that I collected after my first step after precipitating the silver chloride and decanting the supernatant into this. Notice that it still has a kind of like a bluish greenish color. That's because of the copper two ions in solution. And for those of you in Chem 1A, what we're gonna do now is we're going to selectively precipitate the copper two ions. Uh, feel free to continue watching the video, but uh, suffice it to say that what I've tried to do here is show you the strategies involved in separating sequentially the cations that might be present in an aqueous mixture. For those of you in Chem 1B, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue the procedure. Of course, later on, you are going to be actually doing these experiments in a different context, and uh, you'll learn how to do this, but at least I can show you how it works. So the main thing now is that in order to selectively precipitate copper 2 sulfide versus iron 3 sulfide, I want to make sure that this solution is at an acidic pH, around 0.5. To do that, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this selectively or specially coated uh, pH paper. Notice that it gives you a range between 0 and 1.5 pH. So this uh, label here gives you the key. So I'm going to put it here on the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a... Let me put this away a little bit here so we can see it better. I'm going to use a watch glass, and I'm going to take with a pair of pliers, I'm going to take one of these little strips of paper, and I'm going to place it in there, and I'm going to put the pH paper away. Now, you don't want to dip the paper into your solution. What you do is you take a uh, stir rod, you touch it to your solution, and then dab it onto the paper. So let me put myself here in a good position here. So I'm going to take this guy here. I'm going to kind of dab it in there, get a little droplet. I'm going to pin the paper down and then I'm going to kind of kind of touch it there, right? And maybe give it another shot here just to get a good read. Okay. Okay, you can see the change in the color of the pH paper there. And although it's going to be hard here on the video because of the color conversion, I want to bring it over here next to my key and see if it's somewhere where I need it to be. I need it to be somewhere around 0.5, so it should be somewhere in there. Let's say that, for example, it got a little too acidic. So what I want to do in that case is I want to neutralize some of the excess acid, all right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some uh, ammonia, one molar ammonia, uh, put a drop in there and check it again, all right? If you feel that the pH is adequate, then you'll be fine to go on to the next step. Okay, so let's say that you were not satisfied. You feel that the pH is too low at this point. Well, the idea is to neutralize some of the acid. So what you want to do is use some ammonia. Now remember that ammonia, when dissolved in water, actually is ammonium hydroxide. This solution I have here is 6 molar, which might be a little too concentrated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that and dilute it and make myself just a little bit of a 
uh, one molar ammonia solution. And then what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to take a little dispenser pipette and I'm going to add a couple of drops or a drop in my solution to make sure that I can check it again and I'm satisfied with the pH. I'm going to put a drop in there. Okay, I'm going to save this around here. Actually, let me go ahead and close it. And I'm going to use a simple motion. I'm going to flick it with my finger here to create a swirling motion to mix it. And now I'm going to check the pH again. Once more, I'm going to bring my stir rod. Okay. And I'm going to use the same paper I used before so I can check them next to each other. Okay. I'm going to dip the stir rod into my test tube. I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to touch this thing here. And again, if you don't feel that that uh, makes it, just go ahead and keep adding one drop at a time of ammonia, one molar ammonia, until you get it to be where you're at. Now, for me, it's okay. I, I think that it's, it's okay right now. But let's say that you really want to uh, check it. Uh, here, let me show you a little bit better view here. I'm going to put it right next to the thing. So you can see where it's kind of like right in there. It should be somewhere be 0.5 plus or minus 3. So, I mean, personally, I think that it's okay. So we're going to go ahead with the experiment. Okay, students, for those of you uh, from Chem 1A who are watching this, um, you know, you don't have to, I think you've seen enough. You don't need to continue. Uh, you should have gotten the idea of the strategy behind these sequential precipitations to perform a qualitative analysis uh, separating different cations that were in an initial mixture. For those of you in Chem 1B, You'll understand the chemistry of this later on, but at this point, what we have is we have our original supernatant. Again, it should have your copper two and iron three ions. And what we're gonna do is we are going to precipitate them as sulfides, but we're gonna quote unquote feed the sulfide from a solution of a chemical called thioacetamide. And by the way, anytime that you work with sulfides and stuff, they smell very strongly. And so we do this part here in the fume hood. So I'm going to open my bottle of thioacetamide. Again, I'm in the fume hood. Once more, never let the lid touch the bench. So I'm going to hold it, you know, between my finger and my uh, palm of my hand. I'm going to take some of this out. And I'm going to add 10 drops of thioacetamide to my mixture. All right, 10 drops. I think that was about 10 drops. I may have lost count here. You can see there's already a precipitate in there. However, that is not what I'm interested in. I want to make sure that what I've selected is specifically the copper 2 sulfide. So I'm going to mix this a little bit. Again, I'm going to swirl it with my finger here to mix it well, make sure that all of it is exposed to the chemicals. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a boiling water bath. Okay, here is my uh, boiling water bath. I have it in a tiny beaker, 100 milliliter beaker. And again, I don't want it to be boiling like it's splashing all over the place. I want kind of like a gentle boil. Now, I can't just simply dip my test tube in there because it might jump up with the boiling action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a clothespin and I'm going to grab it here by the top. And I'm going to let the clothespin span the width of the beaker so that I can let my uh, test tube rest in there. And uh, let me spin around so you can see what's happening. As you can see, it's starting to turn dark. So I'm gonna let, let it uh, heat there in boiling water bath for about you know, five minutes. Now, now let's say that, for example, your uh, beaker was a bigger one, like this size. It'd be hard to get the uh, clothespin to span that distance. So what I will do is, and I'm gonna use a sample test if it was just water, is you can put two of them, two clothespins, so one there and one there. And then what you can do is those will span the distance, you know, across the top of the beaker, and you can put your test tube in there like that. 
Okay, we finished our boiling water bath and here is our tube now with a very dark precipitate, which should be our copper two sulfide. What we want to do is, again, we want to essentially spin this down and compact it into a pellet and decant the supernatant, which at, which at this point should have our iron three cations. Now you got to be careful. Number one, be very quick in doing this because this smells pretty foul because of the sulfide. Secondly, when you balance it on the test tube, remember the one, the one we did before? That's not gonna work because notice that it's not the same kind of test tube. So you wanna make sure you get the right kind of test tube to match the one you have, in this case, one with a lip on it. And once more, I'm going to put them next to each other and I'm gonna use water to add enough water on the balance tube so that they'll have about the same. There we go. And now I'm going to spin them. So now I can put them in there again. You know, I haven't been doing this, but it'd be good to keep track of which slot your tube is in so you don't waste time when you pick it up. Okay, I'm going to close the lid here and I'm going to start my spin and then we'll spin it for two minutes and then come back and decant that supernatant. Okay, students, we're back here at the centrifuge. Our spin has finished. We're going to open it and very carefully take out our test tube of the uh, copper sulfide precipitate. And as you can see, it'll have a very tight pellet in there. Now, very carefully, what I wanna do is I wanna decant that. Gotta be careful because this time we have some on the sides. So you don't wanna slide your probe down the sides, go down the middle and very carefully remove your supernatant. All right, you may have to leave a little bit behind. And this time I'm going to decant it into a test that I've labeled iron three, because I expect this to contain iron three ions. Now, right now, what this does is it produces a lot of very strong odors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the fume hood to continue the next step. Okay, students, I'm back at the fume hood. This is my supernatant of iron three ions. I do wanna make sure that I got all the copper ions out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple more drops of that thiocetamide. Remember the sulfide pr uh, producer? And I'm gonna drop a few in there to make sure that nothing else precipitates. And as you can see, it's, it's okay. Now, one of the things that can happen, by the way, is that you might get like a light or beige colored precipitate. And that really is uh, in the chemistry of these reactions, sometimes you get uh, sulfur back, you know, sulfur as in elemental sulfur. And that one precipitates in a kind of like a yellowish beige color. But as you can see, we don't have any precipitate here. So our iron three uh, supernatant is ready for the next step. Okay, students, remember that after the first addition of thioacetamide in an acidic solution, we had a supernatant that should be the one containing our iron three ions. So as we explained earlier, we're going to confirm that. First of all, what we want to do is we want to now precipitate the iron three sulfide. But to do that, we need to bring this back to a basic pH. Once more, if I were to take a stir rod and let's say I'm, I'm going to put this back in this uh, rack here, I am going to use one of these pieces of uh, pink litmus paper and I'm gonna to touch it there. And as you can see, essentially nothing happens. I'm going to put it back in there. And I'm gonna put it in there. And as we've seen before, in the presence of acid, you know, pink litmus paper is not gonna change at all. You can see what it just got wet in there. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna add six molar ammonia, drop by drop, until I can get this to become basic. In other words, until it turns blue. All right, so we'll do that now. Okay, I added a couple of drops and look what happened. I already started getting a black precipitate. That means that now the iron sulfide is starting to precipitate. Remember in the presence of basic solution, pretty much all of these cations will precipitate as sulfides. We did the acidic one to selectively precipitate the copper. Let's check the pH of this one here, although we see that it's already working. So I added about five drops right there. So let's check one of these other pieces of litmus paper here. Oh. Okay. 
quite work. I need, need a little more. Still not working. Let me, uh, these steroids are so tiny that they don't collect a lot of liquid in them. So as you can see, it's still not right quite there. So even though I started seeing some precipitate, I'm going to add a few more drops, okay? So we'll do that now. Okay, I added a few more drops of ammonia, and as you can see, it's turning very dark because silver 3 sulfide is precipitating. Let's go ahead and do the litmus test again. Let me uh, switch around these pieces of paper around here so I can get to them a little easier. Okay, let's see what happens when I test it against this thing. Okay, it's hard to see, but you can tell that it's starting to turn blue now, right? Uh, let me do some more so you can be convinced in case you were doubting. Okay, there you go. So you can see the blue color that it's turning into. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a few more drops of ammonia to make sure that it's basic. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put my uh, stuff away. I'm going to get my stuff. I'm still in the fume hood because I'm still uh, working with sulfides. So now that I know that my solution is basic and I can see that there's a precipitate in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete that precipitation by adding some more thioacetamide. So I'm going to add 10 more drops of this. Okay. Let's put that in the back there. Close the lid. Always try to keep this closed. Let's mix it a little bit. I have my stir rod here. I'm going to use it to mix it up a little bit more. And I want to get a complete precipitation of all that residual iron 3 and the form of iron 3 sulfide. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to get our clothespin, put it in there, and we're going to bring this over. Let me slide over here to where our boiling water bath is. And we're going to let that in there for another five minutes, after which we will centrifuge and analyze the precipitate. Okay, students, our uh, iron 3 sulfide precipitation is done. So we're going to now spin it. Again, I'm going to bring it back to our centrifuge. As you can see, it might be hard to see. So make sure that you get a good view of where the liquid is at so you can uh, balance them properly. Uh, make sure you have those same kind of test tubes again, right? And so I'm going to put it in the centrifuge and let's give it a spin and then we'll come back. By the way, whenever you do these washes, be aware of what you are discarding. For example, in this next step, there's going to be some instructions that I'm going to give you about the disposal of chemical waste. Okay, so here we go. Into the centrifuge we go. Close it and begin to spin. Okay, so our uh, spin should be done by now. I'm going to open here and I'm going to gather our test tube. Make sure I got the right one here. Oh, I guess that's not it. That's the balanced one. Sorry. <laughs> so let's go back here and gather this guy. So I've now pelleted my iron 3 sulfide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the supernatant of this and decant it. Actually, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply pour it into... Another test. Actually, I'm going to decant it the way I said I was going to do it. All right. Notice that uh, when I do that, there is a little residue that comes through. It looks kind of dark. I want to keep it in a test tube for now. I don't want to throw it away because who knows? I may have messed up and I may need to come back. Okay. So this precipitate now, this pellet here, should contain now our iron 3 sulfide. What we're going to do is we're going to redissolve it and then do a confirmation test for the presence of iron-3 ions.